Hello! With this video, I'll explain how to make schematics and PCBs, particularly using the program KiCad. What is the reason for making a PCB? It's for making an electronic circuit permanent instead of temporary. If you want a permanent circuit, then a PCB is a great way to go. It's easier to solder than a perf board, and it's a good permanent solution. Originally, electronic breadboards were actually mounted on wood. That's why they called them breadboards. People would take slabs of wood, just like they'd cut a loaf of bread on, and drill holes through them to mount the components. These are pictures of early radios from the 1920s mounted on boards. The modern breadboard looks like this. It has columns and rows of holes that are connected electrically with strips of metal underneath the holes so that you can plug in components, build a circuit, and test it to see if it works before you build it permanently. So here's a picture of uh, different components mounted on a board. You can test this easily to see if it's going to work before you make a permanent circuit. Different techniques exist for mounting things. Uh, one of the original techniques was called wire wrapping. You just wrap the individual wires from the components around the metal posts. They don't require soldering. And it's used somewhat today, but mostly by hobbyists, not, not used very much anymore. A lot of hobbyists use perf board. These are just fiberglass boards with copper pads that you can solder to, drilled through the boards. And these can be used to make a permanent solution, but they're a little more difficult. You put the components on one side and then you solder the other side, but it can be a little bit difficult to solder. Sometimes you get unintended solder bridges. They're, they're not the best solution to making a circuit permanent. Printed circuit boards are really fabulous for a permanent circuit. There's different kinds of components. Notice. On the left, it shows two different kinds of components that can be mounted on printed circuit boards. One is called a through-hole component because the components have leads that you poke through the holes and then solder to the opposite side of the board. That's an older style, still used extensively though. Newer electronics, often done by robotics, is surface mount technology. These are very small components that are mounted on one side of a board and soldered in place. They don't have any leads that stick through. And with these, you can get much smaller circuits. You can get the circuits to take much smaller spaces. So for modern electronics, manufactured robotically uses a lot of surface mount technology. And so when you order components, when you order the parts, or you're building your circuit design, uh, you'll see these terms THT, that stands for through-hole technology, or SMD, which is surface mount device. So how do you go from an idea to a product? It's not magic, but I'll take you through the steps one at a time called workflow steps for making a PCB. PCB stands for printed circuit board. First, you've got to select your circuit schematic. Then verify that your circuit works by breadboarding it. Then you're going to capture, or they call it capture, or it means the same as draw the schematic using a computer-aided design software program in a computer or a CAD program. And there's lots of different CAD programs. An easy one to start with with electronics is a freeware program called Express PCB. It's very simple. It doesn't have a lot of powerful tools to use in it. AutoCAD provides a program called Eagle, which is a much more powerful program. The one I'll be using is a freeware program called KiCad. It's also open source and has become a very powerful program as well. The last thing you do is use the CAD files that you've made from the computer to print or etch that PCB. You can either send the CAD files, uh, email them to a board house that are companies that have the equipment to print the boards, and then they ship them back to you. But a lot of those are uh, overseas, sometimes they're expensive, especially if you only want one board or just a few boards. Uh, obviously the, the more you order in volume, the less expensive it's going to be but you can send those files to a board house to print those for you. Or you can print them yourself if you have the equipment to do so, a PCB printer or an etcher. So that was a big step in step number three to capture or draw the schematic using a CAD program, using KiCad. So I'm going to take you through step at a time how KiCad works. So what is KiCad? Well, it's a suite. It's actually several programs that work together. It's a suite of open source software tools for creating electronic circuit schematics and printed circuit boards. It's a free program, it's freeware, and it's open source, but it has become very powerful and can produce professional quality boards. In fact, it's so powerful, that's one of the problems, is for beginners to start learning to use it, it can seem very overwhelming. I know if you're, if you're a hobbyist, 
you're just getting started into this and, and you're not a professional electronics technician, it can be very overwhelming. So I'm producing this YouTube video for helping my students get an introduction to it, to get started using it, and then they can continue on your own. So we're going to start as an example. We'll use this pretty simple schematic, this continuity tester, to tell if a circuit has any breaks in it or if it's a complete circuit. And so it's a fairly simple circuit, and yet this has enough components and can show enough how to use KiCad to develop any kind of a circuit. So I did uh, breadboard this circuit out uh, just to test it, make sure it, it works, and it worked fine. Here's a close-up of what the components look like on the breadboard. So now the idea is let's take that schematic and draw that in KiCad. So you begin by downloading KiCad. If you don't already have it downloaded and installed, you can download it from this page. If you click on the download button, you just select which operating system you're using. So select your download location and download that and install that. It is a fairly large program, so it can take quite a bit of time to download and install. I'll end this video here and pick up with video 2 after you've installed KiCad.